There is one process in any design team project that both the architects and engineers coordinate on, and this starts right at the beginning, and that is the laying down of the grid on which the structural engineer will base their calculations and the materials they're going to place, such as steel or concrete. Placing a grid in Bentley's BIM solutions of Bentley Architectural or Bentley Structural is straightforward and is very flexible. For instance, we have Bentley Architecture open at this time. How do we place a column grid? We simply click on our floors here to close it. We come down to our structures and the second option down there is column grids. Likewise, if we switch out to Bentley Structural, you'll see that under Columns, Beams, Braces, which is the first tab, the second tool down is column grids. In this session we're going to look at the dialog and what it does and how it can work for you. Once we've selected column grids, a dialog box of column grids opens and we're going to start from the top and work our way down. We only have one pull down menu in column grids. That includes new, creates a new column grid, open that opens a Guide open guide file dialogs used to select existing grid files, which are have an extension of BXG. Save, which saves a column grid as a cell in a file, again with an extension of BXG. The save defaults saves the settings for the start label, attributes, and leader size. And the save default settings are used when perhaps a new design session is initiated or started, or when a new DGN file is actually created. And exit obviously closes the column grids dialog box. Below that we have two fields. First one is name. We're going to call our new grid main. We're going to give it description, main footprint. Underneath that we have both the X and the Y guides and in those we have subsections called start label. This sets the label for the X axis in this case as a single or double letter. So we can sit here and say AA for this one. And in our Y side we can do the same thing as a numeric or alphanumeric value. We can set that as start label 1. Below that is a jump box on each and each of the X and the Y side. And this jump box allows us to set the directional labeling of the grid lines on either the X and or the Y axis. For instance under the X guides I can set them left to right or right to left. And conversely in the Y guides I can set them top to bottom or bottom to top. Below that is our list box. This sets the distance value in master units between two grid lines. For example, if I was in a metric environment and I'm setting my X guides, I could use the values of 220. It's important now to remember to put a semicolon between the two. 440, 110, 440, semicolon, 220. There's a bit of a trick here also. You can actually highlight, if you have regular uh, column grid, you can actually highlight a couple of these. Press Control c on your keyboard and then press Control v and it will paste them into this dialog. On my Y guide, I can actually come into here and in fact what I can do here is cheat a little bit by highlighting that, pressing Control c to copy, coming into my Y side and just pasting. If I was to do this in, in English units, I could actually come in here and put in um, the, the grid line distances are actually separated by semicolons you see in the metric one. English feet inch values are separate by, separated by colons. Commas and returns are not accepted as separators. It's something key to remember in this. So perhaps if I'm entering in feet and inches in English units, I can enter in 6 colon 3 colon 11 colon 12 colon 6 colon 11 colon 6 colon 3 and again I could just copy and paste that across. We're going to go back to our original units that we used. So we have our grid lines, our distances between them set out in both X and Y directions. Underneath that you'll see the class jump box. This sets the element class for your grid lines. Primary, the grid lines and text are placed as standard MicroStation elements. 
If you use construction class elements here, then the grid lines and text are placed as construction class elements, and to hide them you can simply choose settings, view attributes from the main menu bar, and then turn off constructions and it will hide the grid for you. The next one to the right of that is by AA, and please don't get this confused with your start label if you're using double characters. This means by active angle, and we check this on, and at the moment it's by active angle which we know is zero, but we could put in 90, we could put in any value that we wanted. If we leave it blank and press enter, we get a zero. After that we come to our attributes group box. And these are the number of settings available to us. Our level, which is not checked at the moment, we could have actually checked, and therefore anywhere inside our leveling system we could have one called grid, and we can place it on there. In this case I've chosen A-Light. In our color, we can change the color, obviously, to any of the 15 colors available, or we can choose it by level. Our style, and all in that types of style lines that you can adopt that come through with our MicroStation graphics engine underneath, Bentley Architectural, Bentley Structural, and our weight. We also have the ability to put in a leader, and this sets the ending distance for all grid lines, so the ending distance past the last grid line intersection. In this case, I'm going to choose 200. In the right hand side here we have not attributes but labels and this includes include the labels such that the color sets the color symbology to grid line labels in other words our AA and our 1 in this case. Our weight selects the weight symbology, our font selects the font for grid lines and as you know that in MicroStation V8 we have the ability not only to use the Bentley fonts but also all the true type fonts and any AutoCAD fonts that come with it. There's another little box underneath the font box, and this is called size. Size sets the text height and width for grid line labels. And in this case, I'm going to set it at 150. Now we set up our column grids, we can now come and place them. And you can see that Bentley Architecture and or Bentley Structural places us a square on, the, on our cursor and when we click in our position that we want it you'll see that we have our grid specified and our leaders and our labels also specified. In this case our bubbles of, for our leaders, our labels, have overrun each other. So what we can do very quickly is I can come down to my size here, take it down to 75 let's say, and I can come back in and place when I do that, you'll see that there's only one overlap here, and at this moment in time, I can deal with that. There's also the ability to modify an existing grid, and there are a number of options here. We can either read an existing grid, and this populates a column grids dialogs box with values of an existing grid when an existing grid is actually identified, so you can click to an existing grid, select it, then hit read existing, and it will put the values spaces into the left, the X and the Y guides in its proper uh, notation. We have this grayed out one here, replace grid, that replaces the values and the configuration of an existing grid with new values and configurations. And the third one is restore defaults, which discards modify grid settings, deselects previously selected grids, and resets the column grids dialog box back to its defaults, like this.